All right, bringing you another one. This is going to be um, a missions type guide. Uh, someone asked if I would make this, and um, you know I'm going to do it in the same lazy, uneditable format style that I do it in. Um, did not do hardly any research. I looked at one mission type that I don't know much about, and I'll talk about that last. But uh, yeah, I'm basically just going to go up to this mission board here and just blah 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 about all the mission types. And um, hopefully I can do this all from memory, and hopefully this will actually help. So let's get into it. So go to the mission select board here, right? Select missions. I believe, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try right now. You can also just hit M on the keyboard. Look at that. You can do it from, so, from anywhere in the hub. So I'm just going to go down like, you know, not even necessarily like an alphabetical order, which I'm sure is not going to help anybody. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I'm just going to go through it and just like kind of pick at random. So it's up here. So this, this symbol right here, this little squiggly line, um, this is an escort duty mission. So what is an escort duty mission? Um, <clears throat> escort duty is, uh, you follow like this, um, they call it a drill dozer right it's just like this car or vehicle that drills through dirt um, you know it, it goes pretty slow and um, it's got a couple I guess like a couple parts um, in it so when you when you first spawn in to an escort duty um, yeah it's pretty quiet it's it's pretty light um, there might even be like a couple of minerals in the first area that you spawn into you know, like some nitro some some you know just whatever it might be um, you might even see some of your secondaries, whatever those might be, whether it's killing like the fester fleas or collecting Ebo nuts or, you know, whatever it is. Um, you might get a couple of those things in the beginning room. And what happens is, like a couple seconds in, um, I think like this big rig gets spawned in and you have to hit something on the rig to like open it up so that you can actually begin the, the mission. <clears throat> and you begin the mission by pressing the, the back button on the drill. And this basically uh, starts the, the whole thing. Um, you know, what's I, th I think this event actually, or this mission type actually came later um, in its in, in this game's life cycle. Um, it, it came out with that and like one other thing I think simultaneously. And I I thought it was really fun, man. And I still do. I still like this one a lot. I think it's kind of fallen out of style a little bit um, because of the repetitive nature of it and because of. Uh, you know, it's slower, right? It's, uh, this isn't one where you can control the pace as much as, like, as, like, you could on, say, like, an egg mission or something like this. You know, the, the drill dozer goes the speed that it goes at, and there's nothing you can do to hasten that, um, at all. So it's, it's basically, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck. And I don't, I don't, I hope I'm not, like, trying to make it sound negative. I'm just trying to be truthful here. Like, it, 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 it's just, it is what it is. But you know what, what's really cool about this one, though, is um, it gets people together. Um, I'm not going to use the word force, but uh, it encourages uh, group play, I think, maybe better than any other mission type, honestly. And that's why I like it the most. Um, you know, pretty much everyone wants to stay with the drill dozer as it moves. So I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. I mean, there's there's exceptions in situations where that's not always true like uh, I typically play scout so if we pass through a room that's just like loaded up with nitra and then it starts boring like another tunnel um, <clears throat> I'll stay back typically and I'll start mining all the nitra um, so anyways blah 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 how does this thing work so once you're in that first room and you start the drill dozer and it starts moving along um, it basically bores tunnels as it heads towards, um, I believe it's called a heart stone, um, or, or something like this. There's like this big red ball that you have to drill into and you, you like harvest some like super rare lava ball thing. So that's, that's the ultimate goal is to get to this you know, something heart stone. Um, and as it's boring through tunnels, making its way to the destination, um, once or twice, and I don't know if it will stop a third time, but it's usually once or twice. Uh, I think depending on the map size, um, it'll stop and it needs to be refueled. So you'll have to gather, um, I believe it's called oil shale, and it's kind of like this tealish aqua slash black kind of mixtured. You know, if I wasn't lazy, 
I'd, I'd be showing you pictures and uh, like actually doing it. And I think what I might actually do is I might do like an individual uh, mission type, you know, guide for each, and I'll actually have gameplay in it. But uh, you, for now, you're just gonna have to listen to me ramble. Um, so how do you get that oil though? In the in the back of the drill dozer, there's going to be like these two canisters, um, and I believe it also switches the throw button. So I, I think now throw is will be right click, and left click will actually be uh, you know from the canister, like a laser basically shoots out of it, and that's how it like sucks up the oil. So y you get a little bit of distance, which is nice, um, and you know the, depending on how lucky you are, sometimes the oil in the room that it breaks down, well not breaks down, but it, it runs out of gas in. Um, sometimes the oil will be like really low lying, you know, like right on the ground, more or less. Um, but sometimes you have to go back to a previous room and that can stink. And uh, sometimes it's really high up on the ceiling. So you need someone like a gunner to do zips um, and or someone like a driller to drill, you know, crazy high up. Um, and you know, uh, or engineer can use platforms that, to get up to it. You know, I've had some really, like, crazy ones where it was, like, they were just way out of reach. And uh, some really fun ones, too, like, where, like, everyone's kind of utilizing their skills to get to these things. Um, so, like, is there anything cool I can say about this? Um, the driller can actually, um, he can completely drill out these oil things. Um, I don't think it's necessary that they do it, but it's just something neat. Um... Basically, if you can 100% disconnect, like, the blob of oil from the wall, it will fall down to the ground in, like, these little cubes or little, I don't know, little circle looking things, and then you can harvest with the canister real quick. Like, I think maybe even quicker than if you just did it, quote, naturally. So there, there may be an advantage to doing this. I mean, the obvious advantage would be, like, if the driller got up very high, um and knock that down so that you don't have to drag the canister up like a whole bunch of flights or whatever. So that that's kind of a neat trick. Um, so once you fuel it back up, you put the two canisters in the back, and then you go ahead and hit start, and it'll just keep moving along its way. And again, it, it might stop again into in another room, um, and then you, you basically just repeat. I would say um, when you're going through on this one and you see an event, just ignore it. Uh, you can always come back after you finish the main mission type. Because um, at that point, like, you control the pace of the game once once the, uh, the Drill Dozer, you know, mission is basically, quote, over. Um, it, it basically ends when you drill through the Heartstone. I hope that's what it's called. I'm going to keep calling it that. When you drill through the Heartstone and you get, like, this, like, kind of lava orb and you put it in Molly, um, if you choose to send her back, that's when the drop pod will come in and, you know, typical like other missions, you kind of huff it to the drop pod. But you can not hit the button, right? And then you can just go back and do the events. Um, I don't know if there's really anything else to add. Um, when you get to the last part, well, anything else, like the biggest piece of this. Um, when you get to the last part, you get to the, to the stone. Uh, it's very typical that all the nitro that people have been collecting, they'll, they'll blow all the nitro on resupply in in that very last room where the big red ball is where the drill stops you know, like permanently um, and then they usually put them behind the drill on either side or both sides um, and it, there's like a four part stage like once the drill stops they give you a second to kind of you know set up and collect yourself and maybe find additional resources because even the last room can have nitro and all, all sorts of fun stuff in it so you, you know, you can set up all the lights, you can set up your turrets, you can set up your zips, you know, whatever you need to do. Um, do all that, and uh, always just make sure that like, you ask people if they're ready. You know, you, you'll see, like, R, so people will say R, question mark, that means, like, ready. And then you can say R, which means you're ready, or you can type it out. Um, so when you hit the button on the back, um, it'll, it'll start a four-part stage. And uh, basically, you just need to protect the drill dozer as you have been the entire time on its on its way to the heartstone um, there's like a little you can repair and I want to say if your drill dozer is 100% like it, it never got damaged at all um, the repair I think oh I hope I'm not wrong on this I think it's on the right side but it could be on the left I don't know no you know what it's it's on the left yeah it's on the left um, 
and then when the first piece breaks off, so you, it basically has like, I don't want to say three lives, but maybe that is, it's got like the left side, the right side, and the core. And uh, you can lose the left and right sides and still finish the match just with the core. But uh, if all three pieces break, then, then you lose. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure you repair on the left in, initially. Um, and then when that first piece breaks, you can repair on the right. And then if that piece breaks, I think you can repair on either side, left or right. So anyways, back to these stages when you're at the, uh, the Hearthstone. Stage 1 will just be bugs come out. And you just gotta kill the bugs. Stage 2 will be uh, these lava rocks come down. Um, y you can't miss them. They will be these enormous red molten lava looking balls. And they will even have like a line of, I don't know, lava? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Uh, attached to them so they're very visibly easy to see. Um, and they will basically start flying towards the drill dozer. And then when they get just above it, you get like a like a second or two when, when they get to that point and then they will plummet down um, I can't tell you exactly how much damage it does because I think it's dependent upon the difficulty that you do but uh, yeah I, I, I think it's pretty easy or fair to say that uh, the higher the difficulty the more damage those things do so I, I think the drill dozer on like a three can probably take maybe one hit maybe two definitely one but I don't know about two and then after that I, I'm not really sure what happens like on a four you just don't want it to hit the drill dozer at all, right? Like that's the that's the objective. Like you just do not want that to happen. Uh, it will mess it up very quick, um, and it will mess anyone up who's standing on top of the drill dozer. So they can they can do a hurting on you as well. Um, there's some cool stuff that you can do to kill these things, and um, uh, maybe some debates here as to uh, whose job it is to kill those. Personally, I think it's the gunner, and I personally think it's the scout job to kill those rock things but you know what like if everyone can participate they should be um, maybe maybe driller and engineer want to focus more on bugs during that because bugs do come out during that period but you know people have to reload and whatnot so like if you see a stone or one of these ball rock things about to hit the drill dozer like you know it's going to be better if you switch off and, and hit it like we're you know we're all on the same team here so after the rocks, um, the third stage is more bugs, so everyone just kills bugs. And then the fourth stage is, um, yeah, I never know what to call them, beacons, pillars, these like tower-like things rise up out of the ground on the sides of the hearthstone, and they shoot this like channeled laser beam at the drill dozer. And uh, again, it's debatable whether or not it's the driller's job to drill through these things to destroy them, or whether it's the gunner's job to more or less shoot the tip, just the tip, to to uh, to destroy them. Um, other people can pickaxe them. Uh, a scout can actually uh, grapple, basically on the tip of the thing, and then as he's flying towards it, power attack the top, and that kills it instantly. Uh, it's a little harder to pull off, but you, that can absolutely be done. So, like, it's not just, like, one person's job, necessarily. Like, they, they can all contribute towards towards killing them. But, you know, Gunner, I guess, can theoretically sit on top of the drill dozer and, and shoot those things, assuming that his primary gun or whatever he's using is accurate enough to do that. Um, whereas the drillers, you know, drilling through them is a little bit more guaranteed, but it's also, you know, he's got to get from one side to the other when they, you know, spawn at different times. So, anyways, I, I, I hope that helps um, for, for escort duty. Uh, this is going to be a long video, so I just got to move on. Um, extraction. Uh, extraction is... There's no molly in this one. And <clears throat> you don't necessarily spawn right next to... Uh, I'm going to call it the station and or the hub. I don't know what the official name is. Um, but there's like this platform area. Look at that. Now I just threw a third name. There's a there's like this platform hub station area, and it'll have I think four turrets on it or two. It's got some turrets on it, and this is basically uh, you know, Grandma Molly. Like this thing doesn't move, and uh, you can deposit resources or materials, minerals, into it. Um, and generally, extraction is the 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 main thing is that you have to collect a quarks or some sort of stone. I think it's always them, but maybe it's something different. Uh, no, I think it's always them. You just need to collect like this huge mineral, um, and they're blue, these a quarks, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, they kind of look like 
the Jadis um, on the surface. Well, even they're basically the same size and shape as well, but instead of being green, they're blue, and you know you know how to find them or, or where they will be by um, on the surface of where they are. They'll they'll have like these little blue like pebbles or like stones. It'll be in a big cluster, and there's kind of like some sort of like glowy effect as well. I I don't know if it's other people, but for me. When I do these extraction missions on, like, the, let's see if I can even see it, on the frosty ones, man, I have such a hard time seeing, like, you can, like, look in the graphic, right, to the left, like, you'll see kind of, like, a blue light, kind of like that, but there'll be, like, these little pebbly things, and it can be really hard when you're, like, chipping through the ice, to, like, you know, like, because the, the blue glow is, like, bouncing off everywhere, so, sometimes what I'll do, like, on the ice, maps, even if I'm just marking it for myself, when I'm at a farther distance, I can actually see where the stone is, and I have a harder time the closer I get. So I will actually mark where I think it is, and then I follow my own mark to get to the stone. But basically the idea in extraction is, is that you find these stones, and then bring them back to the main station. Um, now the, the, this strategy that I'm about to tell you about, uh, I don't know how proven and true it is, but everyone just does it so I've always just gone along with it, and I've done some solo missions, and like maybe I can say that there is some truth to this, but the idea is that you don't actually um, <clears throat> you don't actually turn in the aquarks, the the stones that you're looking for, like these you know these shiny things. You actually just leave like you pile them up at the station, and I think it's because it, whether it's true or not, um, the more stones you deposit, the harder and or more volume of bugs increases. Yeah. So I think the more you turn in, the str not, well, maybe not like stronger bugs, but I, I think like the frequency at which the, the bugs spawn in increases and, and, you know, slash difficulty goes up. So I, I think that's why people typically, um, they pile, so like if you needed to get seven, like like, like it shows you, like you need to get seven aquarks, um, They'll just pile up all seven, and then when they have them all, then they'll dump them all in. It's a very common strategy. You know, whether or not that's true, I, I can't 100% tell you, but uh, I will tell you that's what everyone does. And, uh, you know, to just make everyone happy, and since it doesn't really matter in my opinion, um, I just go along with it. Um, you know, maybe if you're looking for more challenge, like, like probably how the developers uh, intended, then you can just turn them in I as soon as you as soon as you want. You know, on a three, I don't think anyone's going to care, really. Uh, I really doubt it. Maybe on, like, a four and a five, people would uh, groan if you didn't adhere to the community strat. But that is what that is. Um, and that's and that's really all this mission type is, is that you go find these stones and bring them to the main station. Uh, there's not really, like, a, a stage or series or any kind of thing. that you, Like, there's no script. Um, bugs, more or less, just spawn in at random. Um... I highly recommend playing Gunner on this one because of the zips. Um, you absolutely will have some uh, challenges via elevation and carrying the stone or trying to lob these things up multiple levels and blah 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 is just like a, it, it can be really difficult and just grabbing a stone and then jumping on a zip is way easier. Um, you know, I guess you can make the argument that you could uh, you could use engineer to make platforms and you could drill stuff out and scout well. Scout's not really helping in that regard, but um, I just I just think the zips are really easy, um, and everyone can use them, and it's like the most straightforward. It's just literally, it's like a line from the stone to the station in, in a lot of cases. So that's that. Um, what's another one? Egg egg missions, egg hunts. Um, I I want to say like this and mining are kind of like the premier mission types in this game. So what do you what what's an egg hunt? What do you do with that? Um, <clears throat> in in this mission, there'll be something like four to six eggs that you have to collect, and they will be inside these kind of cocoons. If I want to, maybe that. Yeah, I don't know. Like these kind of like nasty, fleshy-looking things that you have to uh, pickaxe or drill into, and at the center of them are eggs. Um, what's cool about this or like what kind of like what I like about it is that if you use the map they actually show you where all the eggs are so it's not like 
not like a big secret. Um, it's not like you're having to like look on the surf, like like in the Aquark or like in these extraction ones, right? Like they don't. They show you once you once you get the stone out, the map will then show you. I think they look like little blue diamonds on the map. But before you get them out, you don't know where they are, so you you have to look for like all those little pebbly things. But on, on the egg mission, right? It's um nah, it's all there. Uh, there's there's no there's no hiding where they are. Um. Sometimes they can be a little bit more of a challenge to get to. Sometimes, but I, I'd say it's it's kind of roughly the same as trying to get the the A quarks. I mean, I think I had a video where I was talking about how uh, they they can have an egg like dead center in the middle of the ceiling, and it's just like, uh oh, how do we get to that? Like that's like the angle's too hard for a zip. Uh, it's it's too high up into the ceiling for like a platform to really work. Y you know, like it it, it can get like. They can get a little nutty, um, but generally, no. It's they're, they're very accessible. Generally, um, uh, so what happens is when you go to get an egg, um, and if if someone's actually listening to this and they want to comment, um, I never know if it's a percent chance to call a swarm in upon like getting an egg, or if it's like. You know, if there's six eggs on this map, like, three of them are going to have swarms, and just, like, regardless of, like, like this was the egg that was determined that was going to spawn a swarm. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't know. But here's the strategy, though. Um, when someone goes to get an egg, everyone should not grab another egg until it, you know, until everything is clear. So, you, you're with your group, right, and... You, you find you come across the first egg you dig it out and as soon as you dig it out like as soon as it gets loosened you'll hear like a like a like some sort of like sound um, I don't know if it's like a whistle I, I can't really do it but you hear like a, a very distinct sound and within seconds you're basically gonna find out if a swarm is coming or not um, I, I'm pretty sure like that that guy warns you or whatever but no swarm spawns all good deposit the egg and Molly and move on to the next one but if you, he, you know, you hear the sound and then it's like, swarm! All right, stop what you're doing and take care of that swarm. What can happen in these missions, um, sometimes, like, it happens on fours. It, it ha well, it can happen on any difficulty, really, but I, I think uh, where things go wrong is typically on fours. Um, y you have player A who knocks out an egg, and on the other side of the map you have player B who simultaneously knocks out an egg and then uh, simultaneously or shortly afterwards player C knocks out an egg and now there's three swarms that are coming at you ooh uh, I've lost some egg missions because of this it was just too much to handle like me and another guy pulled an egg and we were able to kill our swarm but then it killed the two other guys and we were weak from killing ours so that when the other two came game over um, you know, Chris, if you just gave up hover boots and had iron wheel, it wouldn't have been a problem. Well, you know what? I probably would have died again, right? Mm. <laughs> uh, so, but long story short, pull the eggs one at a time and clear the swarms one at a time. Uh, if you're doing a three, it's probably not as big of a deal. Uh, I guess you could just have everyone split up and do whatever the, whatever they want, hmm? And, um, it'll probably be fine, but I would say on fours and fives, do not do that. Uh, pull them one at a time, please. I think that's really all I can say about that. Uh, it's go at your own pace, basically, and, uh, pull the eggs. Um, I did a has five achievement with the egg one. Uh, the one where you don't have to... The achievement where you, they don't want you to resupply, I did it on engineer with the build... That's actually so. If you if you watch my engineer uh, build guide, um, that build is what I used to get that achievement, and I did it on an egg mission. And not gonna lie, I did it on a four egg mission. Like I did it on the smallest, fastest one that I could do, because you, you're not supposed to resupply. So I just wanted to guarantee success. There's probably something even cheesier you can do. Uh, I don't know if it's cheesy or not what I did, but uh, I think the egg missions and the uh, the more kite missions are considered kind of the easier ones. So yeah, I did do it on an easy one. Um, but I'm, you know, that's what, that's how you want to do it. Yeah, I'm just I'm just running that by you. Anyways, I've talked enough about eggs. So let's talk about mining. This is um, yeah, it's exactly what you think it is. I don't I don't really think there's anything I can uh, share with you here. Uh, 
you know, instead of collecting eggs, or instead of finding a quarks, or instead of uh, escorting a drill dozer, um, instead, it, it, you're just going to mine this resource called Morkite. And I, I think it's kind of bluish, tealish, aqua something, maybe more blue. Um, you know, bluish green, whatever. And uh, you just have to mine, like, a bunch of that. Like, in this this one that I have selected, right? They want you to get 400. Whew, that's a lot. Um, I, I think usually they're like 250. Well, let me just see if I can see another one. Um, nah, 200. Alright, it's on the wire. But anyway, like, they're not always 400. So, you know, like in this one, they just want you to get 200 more kites. So it's, it's just like mining Nitra. Um, it's a one axe pick hit to, to get the resource. Um, yeah, really nothing else I could say about that. It's just mine this, and that, that's it. Um, go at your own pace. So, how about this one, though? This is on-site refining. This might have been the one that was released simultaneously with the drill dozer mission. And I never know what the heck it's called, even though I just talked about it. Escort. Yeah, okay. I think the escort and this on-site refining came up at the same time. I never even call this on-site refining mission. I call this, like, the one with the pipes. <laughs> this is the one with the pipes. Um, this is another one that uh, it has no molly. So like the extraction, like this one. Wow, 10? Uh, yeah, I guess they have 10 ones. Whew. Uh, like extraction, these both do not have molly. Um, so you have like a central hub or platform or base, uh, whatever you want to call it. And I, I really like this one too. Um, there's some like cool teamwork stuff you can do in this one. I think that's why I like this. Um, and it's kind of go at your own pace. I mean, there's a part... Oh, I'll just get into it. So, what you have to do in this one is... When you first spawn in... Uh, basically, what you need to do first is... You need to find three... Um, oh, man. I don't know what they call them. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with like the names and everything. But, basically... Uh, in this mission, you need to refine, like, gas or something. So you need to connect pipes to, like, gas nodes, uh, I'll call them. You know, like, we've struck oil, you know. So you, I'll call them, like, oil pits. Um, they look fiery, um, and I believe it's, like, a blue flame. So it, it can actually be a benefit to not have the lights or any flares out because um, you'll see kind of like a flame flicker in in the dark um, and I'm pretty sure it's bluish and the flames are pretty tall too uh, you know they're not like wicked tall but uh, it, they're, they're visible is what I'm saying so when you first spawn in on this mission type you need to find these kind of oil areas with this blue flame and there's gonna be three of them and if you had like um and this isn't always true but this is generally the case if your map was a rectangular, um, you're going to have one of these oil things on the left side, you're going to have one of these oil things in the middle, and you're going to have one of these oil things to the right, right? They're, they're kind of more or less evenly distributed. It's not always true, so don't, don't uh, kill the messenger, but uh, that, that's generally the case. Um, so if you've kind of explored the right side a lot, and you've explored the middle side, and now you're missing one, it's probably in that left chunk. Um, so when you find this thing, uh, you press E and it calls down some sort of uh, like you can see it in this little picture like the little just like a little refinery thing drops down um, and now you can go back to the main station and start connecting pipes technically you don't have to find all three you could just find one and then connect a pipe to it but you can't connect a pipe to anything uh, until you've called these down I mean I think you can technically just start laying laying pipe oh, I had to say it once right sorry um, well, that's what you're doing. This, that's totally a PG thing to say. Um, you, you need to place pipes um, and connect them to these little refinery points. And uh, the, the, I don't know. It's it's basically shaped like a triangle, I guess. So if you have like a circular platform, you know, there's going to be one that's like I don't know, northeast. There's going to be one that's like south, and there's going to be one that's like northwest or whatever. So you, you just got to look all the way around. But they're, um, I, I guess, like like the on this little platform that I'm trying to describe to you because I'm too lazy to do gameplay. Um, well, while you're walking around on it, basically where your feet are, if you just go like a little bit down, 
so like a foot down from where you would be standing on top of it on the sides that's where these that's where you start the pipes um, and you just need to walk fairly close to them and press E and then you can then drag um, a pipe out and it'll show you kind of like this transparent looking thing that that's pipe and if it's blue it means that you can place it and if it's red it means that like you've gone too far or like the angle that you're trying to do it is too steep and there's there, there's a little bit of that right like you can't uh, bend this pipe in like absurd angles um, it's still rather flexible I think but there's gonna be situations where you're gonna need platforms uh, to get around like up and up and around something uh, you what's really easy I, I think the driller particularly shines in this I mean he shines everywhere but man does he shine here because you can just drill a tunnel straight from like that main platform where you start the pipe all the way to the the, the end um, just straight line like no problem uh, that's super easy but if you're not trying to you know do it like that he can also just help you know kinda you know cutting out a piece that's blocking your way or whatever or like him and the engineer in tandem can kind of do some cool stuff together so that you can get these pipes laid down um, so once you connect all three pipes uh, oh uh, so so first you have to build the pipe leading up to it and then there's actually like uh, so you, like, you lay it down first and then you have to quote build them so at each like connecting node I'll call it so like, let's just say like you can make a pipe go I don't know I'm just gonna say a number that's not accurate but I'll just say the pipe can be at at most 15 feet long oh now you know I'm from America because I just said feet but uh, I don't know 15 meters how about that mm? it's 15 meters long um, oh see now I don't know where I'm going oh yeah yeah so you, you at the end of that right now you have to start another 15 meter piece and then another and it doesn't have to be 15 it could be 5 it, it can be 15 um, I was playing with this guy. He was like a real perfectionist, and uh, I hope he watches this and remembers, because uh, I called him the perfectionist. It, we were, it was me and him and two other guys that were kind of new, right? And uh, he basically yelled at them through voice, like, you know, you could hear his voice. He basically yelled at them because uh, they didn't make the pipe perfect. They didn't make it like the max that you could make it. Oh, heaven forbid that you have to build a little bit more because these, because these guys were learning the game, big deal. But yeah, he he had like a little conniption over not uh, making them perfect. So you know what? If if you're learning and you and you're playing with people, like don't don't be nasty. Like the pipes don't have to be perfect. Like yeah, it's nice when uh, they don't overlap, and it's nice when you get them the exact uh, the max amount of distance, so you don't have to build them as much. But uh, oh my gosh, like. It'd just be cool, man. Just be cool. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Like, how much... You know, it's like those people who have to go, like, 90 to, like, 100 miles per hour on the highway. Like, how much faster are you really getting home? Like, did you did you even save 10 minutes getting home and you almost killed a million... Anyway, that's, that's, like, way off track here. So, you gotta, like, lay this pipe and then someone has to build it at all those, like, interconnecting spots. All you do is go up to it and just press E. Um, and you can have multiple people helping you build it so the more people that build it the faster it goes but when I say build it though you basically just go up to those little interconnecting nodes and just press E um, okay so once you have all three pipes laid and built um, you can then hit a button on the platform thing to, to get things going this, this is um, this is where I would say if you guys saw an event um, before you hit that button I would go then do the event um, yeah there's a reason why you should do it then and not another time. Um, if you actually do the main event, you do this on-site refining thing, and you finish it uh, to completion, if you try to do the event at the end, it just, this is my piece, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like the spawn rate of the bugs gets a little silly, uh, like crazy sometimes. So before you 100% start this thing, I would do the event. So anyways, lay the pipes, built them, all connected. Now you're ready to start the event. This is going to do like, um, I, don't know, I don't know if I would call it stages, but what ends up happening is uh, the, the station starts siphoning the gas from these three things that you've connected. And 
I don't know if it's like a specific percentage, but you'll see like um, you'll see like a like a percentage of completion. Like you know, we, we've we've sucked up twenty percent oil, or we've sucked up fifty percent oil. It, it goes on its own, right? Um, but every I don't know twenty-ish percent, plus or minus, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure someone's like, well, actually, it's like it's twenty-three point five percent that it stops every time. I don't know what it is, man, but it. To me, it seems random, but maybe it's not. Uh, it'll stop at certain periods, and uh, basically, like, there's cracks in certain pipes. I don't know if it's necessarily all three. I think it's typically two out of the three pipes. And uh, at any of those nodes where, you know, you, you did, like, you did a 15-meter pipe, and then you did a 10-meter pipe, that, that little, you know, middle part, like what I'm calling a node, um, they can be, quote-unquote, broken. So they will, uh, they will be, like, gushing. Uh, oil and you, you really honestly you have like as much time as you want to take so it's not like you're really like under the gun or anything but uh, bugs get attracted to these as well they will actually prioritize going to those in some well it's not always true but if you if you reach a location where one of those pieces is broke and there are bugs there they will have already gone to that spot and they're like attracted to it so it's almost like a like a like an engineer's lure then you can just kill them or you could just ignore them, and you can repair the pipe as they're, like, hitting it. As soon as you repair the pipe, though, they're like, uh-oh, and then they want to go after you. So it might be a good idea to kill them, then repair the pipe. But, uh, I don't know, maybe time is of the essence, and you just want to repair the pipe, and you're a scout, and you just grapple away. Ha-ha! <laughs> um, so, yeah, you just basically go through a series of repairs. So then, like, I don't know, two of those pipes are busted at, like, two or three different locations along that pipe. Everyone fixes those two or three things on pipe one, and everyone fixes the two or three broken pieces on pipe two, um, and then it, it resumes again. Um, yeah, and it just that just happens like a few times, and then it gets to 100%, and then you can hit the button, and then uh, the drop pod comes down, and uh, that's it. So I've talked a lot about that one, so i, I got to move on. Um, let's see. So we've done egg, we've done extraction, we've done mining, we've done... The escort. I'm going to talk about this one last. Um, so what haven't I done? I have not done salvage, and I have not done the one with the dreadnoughts. Let's talk about the ones with the dreadnoughts. So they call this elimination. I've never even known what this is called. I've played this for like 500 some hours, and I've never known. This is called elimination. That's incredible. Is that really what it's called? Elimination. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So elimination is like this yellow crosshair one. And uh, you look in this example here, it says kill two dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts, I've referred to them as bosses. Uh, maybe that's fair or not fair, but um, they are rather large. Maybe not detonator large, but they are pretty large um, uh, bosses. Uh, yeah, as best I can describe them. Um, there are a variety of dreadnoughts, and this, I'm going to say it was newer, but now it's probably, you know, like, newer is such a subjective term now. Uh, when I first started playing, there was only one Dreadnought. There was not the multiples that we have now. So I'll say it like that. And I started playing in October of 2020. So, uh, which, which ones can you get? Um, you can, I'll, I'll call it like the very first Dreadnought. Um, he gets like a yellow break bar. Um, I don't know what game started doing that. I really don't know. My first uh, experience with like these break bars, I'm, I'm not even sure that's what they're called, um, was Guild Wars 2. Uh, and... Yeah, so I, and I've seen them in a variety of games now, but uh, basically, like you gotta shoot at this guy's butt to get to get rid of that yellow bar. And I'm sure someone's gonna be like, "Well, actually, you could hit them in the face." All right, mm -hmm. cool. Um, but you know, for those of us with bullets and that uh, need to aim, um, you want to shoot his butt. And what it'll do is once once you keep shooting at his butt, uh, that yellow bar will break. Or, you know, go away. It's almost like two HP bars, right? So you get rid of that little HP bar, the yellow one. And then now, and again, the strategy is basically the same. Keep shooting at his butt, and now you'll start dipping into his health pool. And that's really all you have to do. Uh, shoot at his butt to get rid of the yellow bar, and then you get uh, a little bit of time to shoot at his butt to get rid of his red bar. Um, and then he will uh, actually become immune um, for like a little bit so if, if you ever see a dreadnought and his bars turn gray stop shooting do not shoot at him he cannot take damage so gray bar hold up and this can kind of give you some uh, windows of opportunity um, 
when he goes gray. Not necessarily, but generally, this is a good time to reload. Uh, this is a good time to resupply. This might even be a good time to res somebody, uh, depending on the boss. And I'm gonna give. I'm gonna talk about that, and just just in a second. Uh, for another one that I know that's like it's really like uh, it's like a go-to uh, I'm very confident about but uh, yeah that's like the first boss and like what is he called I don't know dreadnought uh, dreadnought I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure you'll just know that he's got like a big yellow bar and a, and a health bar and um, you can only do so much damage right before he goes gray uh, I don't know what this is I don't know if it's like 33% of his health I don't know if you can do in one phase like 50% of his health and then you you are forced to do like two more phases but, like, even with, like, the best people on my team, I've never been able to, like, zap this guy down, like, in one, like, swing. Uh, that's what I'll call her, like, one stage. He, he generally, like, you rip through the yellow, and then you get, like, a good chunk of his health down. Then he then he goes gray, and then his yellow bar comes back, and you gotta do it again, and then you gotta do it, like, a third time. And it, it can be, like, and I think if you're going slow, it can be more than that. So, I don't know, probably, like, minimum two times yet you have to go through his yellow bar um and max i don't i don't know what it is but like i i've had some struggles before where we did it uh, multiple times more than two so there you go that's that's the regular one and that that was the old one right um but now they have i think it's two more if it's more than that i'm forgetting what the other ones are but two more um the the one uh ah, man i've had some real difficulty on this one so I guess he's bigger or about the same size and he spawns like miniature versions of himself I think called sentinels huh there's something that I remembered um, and there's like five of them maybe more maybe less I don't know it's plus or minus five that he spawns and you got to kill them and I don't know if they're quite as strong as a Praetorian they're like plus or minus a Praetorian that's that's how they feel to me um, so not, you know, not, like, incredibly scary or anything like that. It might even be less. Um, they definitely don't do, like, that acid that a Praetorian does, so that green stuff. But what they do do, huh? Do do. Um, when you kill them, I think it's when you kill them, they release, like, this kind of orangey-colored puddle. And if you get stuck in it, it slows you. So you don't want to be right next to them when they die. Um... And, and they, could, they can do some hurt, especially on the higher difficulties. I think, like, on threes and fours, though, they're, they're kind of, like, pushovery. Um, and uh, something worth mentioning, too, and I don't know if it's ever been fixed or not, because uh, it's been a while since it's happened to me, but there are some situations where I've been doing this type of boss, the boss that spawns the Sentinels, or the Dreadnought that spawns the Sentinels, and I never... Um, they don't spawn. The, the Sentinels don't spawn. And... Uh, that you, like, I'm literally just, like, looking at the boss, and he's looking at me, and we're both just, just like, ah, well, what happened? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, aren't you supposed to spawn the Sentinels? And he's like, yeah, but it, I, it's not it's, it's not working. So that's it. That's it. It's game over. Um, if they don't spawn the Sentinels, you can't kill him. So, you know, he goes home, you go home, you got to start it over again. So I just, I just want to warn you, like, that, that can happen with that guy. And maybe that's been fixed now, but uh, that, that has happened to me a number of times, and... Sheesh, that can be really frustrating, especially like when you're on the second dreadnought, and that's the guy you get, and it's a higher difficulty, and you begin like real sweaty, and uh, you know he's basically like, cause he, and you know what? Never mind. That's enough about that. So uh, to to kill this guy, right? So he spawns his his sentinels, and um, after you kill all the sentinels, he gets like four. Uh, I think they're called weak points. If they're not called weak points, you call them whatever you want to call them. Um, but he gets like four separate yellow bars, kind of like the the previous guy. Instead of one big one, it's just four little ones, and they're like there's these little sections on his body. It's like basically two on the side and like two on the top of his head or body. It's more or less. There's just four, and you got to hit the four. And once you hit all four of those, when you know, you take that yellow bar to nothing on all four, uh, then his health is exposed. And Man, it's kind of eluding me right now off the top of my head whether or not this is a guy you have to get behind. I'm pretty sure you do. If you want to get like that max damage, you got to get behind him. You got to shoot him in the butt. Right? That's really like the strategy for most of these bugs is shooting him in the butt. Um, so you want to get behind him and, and, and do that. Um, once you've pumped enough uh, bullets into him or whatever, he will go gray. And then he will start over again. And then he will spawn the sentinels. You kill the sentinels. Then he'll have the four things. You kill the four things. 
then he'll have his health, and then y y you do that, and like, again, I don't know how much damage he takes before he just goes immune. I don't know if it's a timer. I don't know if it's both. Um, but I feel like I've played in very with some very talented players, and we still kind of had to go through multiple of these, you know, Sentinels, breakpoints, shoot him in the butt. Sentinels, breakpoint, shoot him in the butt. Sentinels, breakpoint, shoot him in the butt. And, it, you know, it just it goes on like that for as long as it takes. All right. So, last one, and this is also a newer one. Um, it, they're, I, don't, I call them, like, the twins. Uh, I, I'm not sure what their names are, but there's, like, it. there's two, and one is red, and one is yellow. And, uh... The red one likes to get a little closer to you, typically, and the red one does, like, this, uh, he'll shoot, like, um, hmm, you know how, like, the oppressor can do, like, that thing where, like, a line, he basically does, like, a line of ground that, like, comes up and, like, shoots you up? Well, he basically does that. He basically does, like, this line that where it looks like the terrain is being, like, uplifted, although I don't think it actually is, but it, you know, he shoots, like, this line at you and it really hurts and he'll basically do like three lines it's almost like you know whatever degrees to the left and then like dead center and then like whatever degrees to the right um and they can be hard to dodge sometimes but like if he does like his like left one and you're like way left you'll just totally miss it and you'll definitely miss the middle and right one that he's going to do um bas basically like if he makes eye contact with you and you're like kind of within his range he's he's gonna plant and do that thing so you just want to bolt um i don't know what direction is like the protastic way to go but w when i see him kind of like lock in and i know he's about to do this thing i just start like spinning around behind him um and i, I don't seem to have a lot of trouble with it but i, I know i've seen other people just like eat all three and they get killed um and i think uh, i think i think he also shoots like fire like in this he just like kind of like the flamethrower i think he does fire um so the idea is you just don't get up in his face and you try to you and I and you, you try to get like behind him kind kind of like every other bug. Um, I don't think he necessarily takes more damage if you shoot him in the butt. I think you can shoot him everywhere. That fight is so chaotic though. Like I think just trying to shoot him anywhere is really like the key. But I don't think you have to shoot him in the butt like the other ones. I don't think it's really like it's it's not mandatory. I think you can just shoot him anywhere um, because while he is doing that business. And his friend is uh, his twin, kind of, um, the yellow one. The yellow one seems to typically stay on the ceiling or on the wall. That's not always true. Sometimes it'll go melee with you, but um, it typically seems to want to... St it's like the more ranged guy, and he, uh, or individual, he, he likes to stay on the th away from you. And he shoots these... Um, mm, I'll call them like uh, molten ball things, and uh, and or some other stuff that's nasty. And uh, sometimes what you can actually do is look when he shoots that at you. Instead of running away from it, you can actually run closer towards him to avoid getting hit. I wish I could describe it better. And again, if I if I wasn't so lazy, I would just show you the the footage. And uh, I, I guess at some point I will be making like more individualized ones of these, and I and I can show that off. But basically, he does a lot more ranged attacks, and he's farther away. That's, just, that's, that's like his MO or whatever. So the idea here with these two is that you're... Uh, it's not... You don't have to do it, but I think the strategy here is that you want to kill both at the same rate. Because what they will do is after you've beaten either of them up a good amount... I don't know if that's a certain amount of damage you have to do, or the timing, I don't know. But once they've taken some hits, um, they will actually just, you know, they say time out, their bars go gray, and then they split each other's damage evenly amongst one another. So if you really messed up one guy, like you brought him down to half and you didn't touch the other guy, now that guy will be back up to 75%, and the other guy will will then lower his health by like 25% or some sort of formula like this, right? They basically even each other's health out. So the idea is that you want to kill them at roughly the same rate. Um, I don't think you strictly have to adhere to that. Um, I, I I don't know. That's just me. Uh, I, I've done them enough now that uh, 
it, it does it never really seems to matter whether I'm whether we just like slay one like kind of quickly versus trying to bring them both down but I think people like to try to bring both down and like which one's the yellow one and which one's the red one I never know <laughs> I just have to start hitting them and then I'm like okay that's okay that one's named the yellow one that's that's his bar and that's the other guy's bar so I just have to figure it out as I'm playing it but um, in the very beginning it's like it's like guaranteed that you're gonna do like a good chunk of damage to both of them or one of them and they will go gray and share each other's life uh, this is a prime time to res somebody they give you like a, a good amount of time like they give you enough time to go to run up to someone and fully res them without field medic perk um, yeah it's also a good time to reload it's also a good time to resupply um, and they will do it at least one more time where they share each other's health if not two more or three more times but that first time though it's so guaranteed uh, it's so consistent when they do it uh, it's just yeah like you, you can you can uh, set your watch to it like it's 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 that consistent so anyways those are the three dreadnought types um, and you find them on these maps they will be enormous pinkish reddish eggs y you can't miss them you open up the map and like BAM you, you know exactly where they are so it's basically that and like you know collect Evo nuts or you know blue caps or like wh whatever it is um, these can be done pretty quick especially on like lower difficulties um, so if you're trying to get like some some quick ones in I, I, th I feel that these are generally quick on the on the lower difficulties on the higher difficulties who um, and there's like a variety of things I could be like telling you about with like strategies and things. I I'm just not going to go into that because uh, this is probably already going to be way too long. So I, mean, I got to move on. No, not the server list. I want close. And so I haven't talked about salvage and I haven't talked about sabotage. So let's just talk about salvage. Yeah. Is that the? Those are the last two. Okay. Salvage. All righty, salvage, salvage, salvage. Um, I like doing salvages; they're cool. So when you first spawn in, um, basically what you're doing is you're looking for two or three. Uh, I call them mini mollies. They look just like molly, but they're much they're smaller. Um, and you're looking for they're broken in in, in these mission types. Um, you're you're basically looking for their main body, and they'll have like um, they like this like greenish like glow. Or whatever it kind of looks like like little uh, gunner shields um, and they're just like I think they're just always up um, so you look for the the green glow and I think there's also a sound that that it makes like bunk, bunk, or so, something like this I, I, so I think there's a sound and there's in the green shield glow and, and that's how you that's how you find them and you need to attach three legs uh, I, I don't know why every robot or every other, what do they call them, mules, why every mule always breaks three legs and it's never just two legs or all four or just one. It's always, they are always missing three. Um, so you need to find three legs and it looks kind of like what you think it would look like. I, I Again, because I'm lazy and I'm not showing anything, but just see, see like in this picture, just imagine like you just see like a raw leg. And it'll actually be like this kind of little miniature picture here. It'll be this kind of grayish silver and green uh, colored leg. Um, and uh, I, I think when, uh, when, when you're like brand brand new, it's like, well, how come I can't pick up the leg? Like, I found a leg. Like, what's, and I can't, uh, you got to pick it out a lot of the times. You got to pick it out. So just like either like one light pick or like a, a super pick will uh will get it out and then you just press e and pick it up and you bring it over and press e to attach it and uh, a newer feature that was added and this didn't always exist um i don't know if you even need to attach one leg i think if you just find it you go up to it and you hold down e and it will actually do like this like scan and it will it will then show you on the map where other legs are and there's always like an abundance of legs there's always a bunch of legs so let's just say you had two so you would need six total three for each they'll put like 18 legs or like 12 legs or so like they'll put like way more than you would need um on the map so like it's not a it's it's not a big deal um but yeah once you find three and attach three you, you then have to repair it by just pressing e and the more people that are with you to repair it the faster it'll go so you find all the legs for this one, repair it, find all the legs for the other one, repair it. 
Um, at this point, you can call Molly, and the, it will go to a drop ship that's already landed in that mission. I think the idea with salvages is uh, another group of miners. I think that's like the story is another group of miners had uh, failed a mission. They basically they died, and you're uh, you're salvaging, right? Uh, you're kind of picking up their pieces. So a, a drop pod is already there. Um, so that will send the mules and Molly back to the drop. And then it starts the other like phase of the game. This, uh, this little like boxed radio tower, that's what I call it, will be right next to the drop, drop pod typically. Yeah, I think it's always next to it, but sometimes, like, the elevation, like, sometimes it'll put it, like, way up on a, like, on a cliff, even though it's close by, and it's just like, oof. You can use a driller, or really, or anyone can, like, break out the pickaxes, and you can actually drop the radio tower down, so that it's on the same level as the drop pod, and that, that can be beneficial for a number of reasons, but whatever the case is, you, you find, like, this little radio station thing, this little box, and everyone repairs it. And once it's fully repaired, it spawns, well, it spawns, I don't know, it creates this uh, green dome. And um, basically, uh, you have to stay inside the dome for a period of time so that, like, the radio signal, I guess, can reach uh, whatever. Um, yeah, so basically, you basically just have to defend this thing for a period of time. And uh, if anyone is still listening to this rant, um, this ramble, I don't actually know the answer to this question. Um, I believe that the more people you have within the dome, the faster it goes. But you technically only need one person in it. So, can someone, can anyone tell me if more people in it actually speeds it up? I feel like it does. I feel like it does. And typically when you're playing with people, they typically all stay inside. So I assume that is the truth. I always just stay in it. I always just stay in it. Like, I'm not trying to bounce out of it. Now, there are situations where, um, maybe three of you need to leave and one person stay inside. Uh, I can think of situations with bulk detonators where that has absolutely happened. Um, if you leave, if everyone leaves for too long, I believe you fail. So, I think you're technically allowed to, to leave, but I think you lose the progress that you had made. And I think if all that progress is lost, I think that's when you lose the mission. I think. Um, it's been a long time since I failed one of these, so I don't really remember, but Green Dome, you want everyone to stay in it, and there's some, like, some cool, like, driller things that you can do with this, and there's cool, like, engineering things, and you can set up zip lines, and, like, all this stuff, and I'm not gonna go into that right now, but, uh, the idea is that you stay in this, this dome for a period of time, and then once the green bar fills up, then, um, another thing is gonna get dropped down from the sky, and it's like a re, it's like a refuel, you know, for the for the pod to get out of there, um, and that's not always right next to the little radio station. It'll be like on the other side, or it'll be, it'll be close by. Typically, it's it's usually not that far away, but sometimes that can end up on something that's like way higher up. And again, you can have like a driller or, or whomever like knock it down, um, or you kind of have to just like relocate, just like a just a, just a little bit further. But it's the same idea. Um, uh, the only addition is. You have to connect a like hose from that thing that spawns to the pod, um, and there's, there'll be like a little connection point on the drop pod. It's not uh, it's not wicked high up. I mean, it, it's it's pretty low. Like it's above the part with the drill and and the pod. Um, y you'll see it, um, and it'll, it'll 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 have like a little glow. So you you connect that thing, and then you repair it. And it's, it's just like the radio tower, a green like area uh, activates or whatever and you have to stay within it and you have to defend it from bugs you know like from from a swarms or swarms or waves whatever you want to call it um, and once the second one is defended then you're only in the map for like another two minutes till you can board the drop pod and leave so that that's salvage all right um, the last one I can't really talk a lot about this um, I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, for another video uh i just quickly looked at and this is the only like quote research that i did before doing this video um i've only done this once so i can't talk a whole lot about it um i'll try to do my best here it, not that anyone's even listening anymore um i'm just i'm just talking to myself in, in the basement um they i've I, I think they've also said and when i say they the developers uh, i think they've also said that this mission will change 
and or go away. So this is the seasonal mission called Sabotage. And again, I've only done it once, so I can't really talk a whole lot about it. But um, it has all the themes that you, you see, like for some of the random events and the other missions. It's all tied into the seasons, but this whole like, uh, you know, like that prospector thing. I don't know if you I feel like if you're if you're new, you might not know what, what I'm talking about. But the there's like this like ship or whatever, like this like robotic plane looking thing that flies around in some missions. It's an event, and you gotta you gotta kill that, and like little little robots spawn. Um, and you gotta kill them, and then once once you go through killing all these robots, so you eventually are able to kill the flying ship called the Prospector, and he drops like this data cell or whatever, and you deposit it, and you get extra bonus EXP, and that's when you can use like that seasonal terminal and get more script and all that stuff. Well, th this is almost just like a, a collection of all those things in a mission type. So when you first spawn in, you call it like the safe room or whatever you want to call it, and then you find the dirt, and then you tunnel into the vault room, and the vault room has some sort of activity that you do in there. Uh, I think it's the one, and I, I think it's like another one of those, um, now, you know, I don't want to tell you, like, the wrong stuff. So you find, like, a vault room, and you might have to do an event in there. And or they have, like, these two connecting power rooms. You have to, like, f like find these, like, from the vault room, you, like, follow a line of cable into another room, which I think is called the power room. And it's in that room that I think, like, the other random event you can see in other missions, you have, like, that reddish tower-looking thing, and then it, uh, you know, you, you interact with it, and then it drops, like, that hacking bot somewhere, and then you have to put those kind of green beacony things down that connect, like, that line or whatever. And I think you do that twice in, the, in each room. And then I think you come back to the vault room, and I think it's in the vault room that you do, like, the boss... And, uh, again, I can't really talk a lot about it, because, like, I, I hardly remember it. I've done it once. Um, please, just, like, dude, go go to this guy's video. Like, I'm, I'm sure he talks about it. Like, I, I clicked in it, and I, I was like, okay, it looks like he explains it. Like, he's going to do way better than me. Um, but it seems like, uh, like little snaky robot things spawn, and you got to kill them, and, like, other flying robot things spawn, and you got to kill them. And then you get these stages where it's, like, um... I don't know, like this red area or like these corners of the this robot, this big robot thing in the center, like open up and then you like you shoot those, and then there's another point where it's like there's like more robots that spawn in everywhere and more of those snaky robots spawn in and you kill all them, and then now like on the sides of that big center robot, there's like more like other red circles and you got to shoot those red circles, so it's a very like you know kind of World of Warcrafty multi-staged boss kind of deal where you like. You kill little annoying things, and then you kill, like, weak points, and then you kill little annoying things. It's kind of the same flavor as a lot of these other things. And then, uh, yeah, it eventually all blows up, and uh, that's the end of the mission. But um, these may not, uh, this may not be a, a permanent mission type, so that's why I'm not really talking about it a lot. And also because I have only done it once, so I don't really, I, it's hard for me to talk about it off the top of my head. So again, I'll put a link for that, and um, I think that covers it. Um... What else can I say? Because like, if this video is super long, no one's going to watch it anyways. Um, I, I think that's that's basically it. Um, yeah. So I, I hope that helps um, with the mission types. Uh, if you're trying to do like some quick ones or some, quote, easier ones, I think the mining and egg ones are probably the community staples for what's easiest. Um, so if you're doing like has five for the first time, you're branching out. Uh, I, I would say to, to, to do either of those. Um, may, maybe stay away from an Escort in Has 5, especially if you're doing it solo. Those those can be particularly difficult, if not impossible. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, I hope that helped. And, um, you know, if you guys have any ideas for other things that I can do, uh, please let me know. And um, I do plan on doing a video for each of them doing even more rambling but i'm hoping to actually do gameplay for these so you can see what i'm talking about and it's not just me you know just talking anyways thanks so much i appreciate it